Um, all right, so let's get started. Uh, thank you for joining us. My name is Dal Moon from SK Hynix. I'm working for Memory Systems Research Group, and I have my colleague Teo Huang, and we're going to presenting a CXM memory expander use case in the AI domain. And specifically, uh, we accelerated LLM serving system uh, with, um, by CXM memory expansion. Green one, okay. So by now, I think a lot of people are aware of the fact that input sequence length is increasing dramatically, and primarily driven by the adoption of, you know, reasoning models and multi-model language models, and also growing popularity of agency applications and multi-turn conversation chatbots, which uh, keeps the um, entire history of conversation over a long period of time. So the performance implication of this trend is that as the number of tokens uh, to be processed increase, the amount of compute in TFLOPs also increases uh, proportionally, well, uh, in the quadratic matter to be exact. So this leads to a higher time to first token latency and lower overall system throughput given the limited uh, GPU resources. So to address this challenge, there have been a lot of optimizations introduced, and prompt caching is one of them, uh, which is also known as preface caching. So prompt caching uh, is based on the observation that across multiple requests, there are uh, shared key or shared, prefix, shared prefixes. So instead of uh, reprocess tokens for those shared prefix uh, prefixes over and over again across requests, uh, prompt caching actually stores process result, which is called key value pairs in memory, and by the time when a request with a match prefix comes in, then those values are loaded from memory into HBM and then process uh, to generate the result. So since reading from memory is much faster than recomputation, uh, this leads to lower uh, latency and higher throughput. So it turns out prompt caching works pretty well, uh, but as the number of users increases dramatically, just solely relying on GPU memory uh, alone is not uh, sufficient. So people started offloading uh, prompt cache to uh, host DRAM, which offers a much higher capacity in the degree of a, uh, in the order of a few terabytes. Um, but obviously, uh, this incurs additional latency because now we have to fetch key value pairs from host memory uh, to HBM. And as you, uh, look, as you can see in the graph on the left side, uh, this uh, like, uh, result in higher TTFT uh, compared to uh, fetching key values directly from HBM. But still, uh, this is way faster than GPU recomputation. But again, as the number of users increases dramatically, uh, we might need more uh, memory. So our idea is pretty straightforward. So why don't we just uh, improve, well, increase the host memory by 6M memory expansion? So for those who are not familiar with 6M memory expander, uh, it's basically a memory module attached via PCIe slots. And as you, um, so you can place in the multiple CMS memory expanders, uh, through PCI slots, you can uh, increase uh, host memory um, proportionally. And with the support of CXL switch, you can scale even further. Um, and obviously, since this memory module is attached via PCIe, uh, its latency is a little bit higher than uh, conventional uh, DDR DIMM based DRAM, uh, about like 100 nanoseconds to 150 nanoseconds higher latency, uh, but it's way faster than SSD. So to see whether the, um, you know, this latency difference between conventional DIMM-based DRAM and SX expander really matters when it comes to LNM serving, uh, specifically for prompt caching, we conducted a simple experiment uh, where we ran a uh, single query uh, with varying prefix lengths. And it turns out that whether we store uh, prompt cache in, uh, conventional DRAM or in CXL expander, it doesn't really matter. Uh, both scenarios uh, you know, result in almost the same TTFT, 
So this is very promising because now we don't have to deal with this latency difference uh, in software level. We can just plug in CXM memory expanders and we're good to go without any software optimization. So we, to see whether uh, uh, this latency difference really uh, uh, was that affects the TTFT, uh, we conducted a simple uh, experiment with a single uh, request. And um, well, well, I think that's what I just said. So again, we just saw the potential of CXM memory uh, expansion for a single request. Uh, but we wanted to expand it to more realistic scenarios where multiple requests are processed in parallel under uh, more realistic point per second uh, demand. So we, uh, sorry. Yeah, so we set up an environment where we run VLLM and LN cache on GPUs. And we also use the benchmark uh, traces, which is called like Cherry GPT and others. And also we uh, implemented traffic generator uh, with which we can control query per seconds so that we can uh, basically uh, stress underlying LNM serving system uh, with uh, substantially higher query per seconds to see if that system still uh, meet the strict uh, time to first token requirement even under such high uh, QPS. So. For now, I think Teo uh, Huang will, I'll hand this over to Teo Huang and he will walk you through the detailed uh, well, experimental results. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Don. Uh, now I will explain the experiment section. Uh, I will skip this. Okay, our first experiment result is time to first token or TTFT. Uh, this measures the latency. Uh, uh, between when a request is sent and when the first response token is received. Uh, in, the, in the prompt cache, the memory load time is shorter than GPU compute time, as we discussed in the previous section. So average TTFT can be significantly reduced. Uh, however, uh, host memory alone cannot hold the entire working set. So uh, in the first figure, uh, host memory alone cannot hold the entire working set, so most requests result in cache misses. Uh, in contrast, expanded memory with CXL, uh, it can hold the entire working set. So it can improve the ca uh, cache hit ratio from 0% to 76.5%. So as shown in the bottom right graph, the average TTFT can be reduced by 52%. Our next result is throughput. We define throughput as the number of prefilled tokens processed per second. Uh, in our experiment, we measure the throughput uh, while varying calls per second, or QPS. Uh, as shown in the bottom right graph, uh, the throughput of host memory alone, uh, uh, it, it, saturates, it saturates and the TTFT increases. In contrast, the throughput of expanded memory with CXL, uh, it keeps increasing uh, steadily without hurting the TTFT. This is because uh, host memory alone uh, cannot hold the entire working set, as, uh, as we discussed in the previous uh, slide. So, but if the prompt cache works properly, it can save uh, computing resource, so, which can be used to process more requests. So that means we can increase the throughput. So as a result, the expanded memory with CXL, which can fully benefit from the prompt cache, uh, it can allow the throughput to keep increasing steadily. And we also compare memory with MVMe SSDs. Uh, SSDs have higher latency and lower bandwidth compared to memory. So loading data from SSDs takes longer than memory. So as a result, as shown in the bottom middle graph, the SSDs show a 30% higher TTFT. Because, because TTFT is higher, SSD can process fewer requests than memory. So as a result, as shown in the bottom right graph, as QPS increases, the throughput of SSDs uh, saturates earlier than that of memory. Okay, the experiment section is complete. Now I hand it back to Don.
All right, so to summarize, uh, CXN memory expansion allows for a larger uh, prompt cache, and which in turn um, enable underlying LLM's uh, serving system to sustain much higher query per seconds while still meeting uh, strict uh, time to first token uh, latency requirement. So, and this is you know very cost effective solution because now instead of the purchasing additional GPUs to increase system throughput, uh, we can just purchase much affordable CXM memory expanders and plug them in and get the uh, system throughput um, you know as much as we can. So that's basically it, all we have for this presentation. So for detailed information about the, all the experiment results, uh, you can uh, visit our project wiki uh, page, uh, which you can access through this uh, QR code. And if you have any questions and want to collaborate with us, feel free to contact us via emails. And, and of course, there are a lot of uh, you know, things that has to be further investigated, including you know, leveraging SSD uh, for key value cache offloading. But I just leave that for future research for now. All right, thank you. Thank you, and uh, we do have a minute or two in case people want to ask a question. The microphone's right there, yeah. should be on. Hi, this is a good presentation. I think everyone is clear that using CXL memory reduces la latency compared to NVMe. But have you done a TCO analysis like, okay, uh, my CXL memory costs the system, you know, without CXL memory is X, uh, and let's say you have some NVMe already. Now you add CXL memory. So is there some feel for that? Well, currently without any software optimization, uh, offloading to um, SSD uh, does not sustain high throughput. It under like, it violates TTFT requirements like SLO latency. So we need a further software optimizations to enable well, like prompt cache offloading to SSD first. So once that is done, we can compare this you know, TCO analysis. But our you know, hypothesis is that you know, uh, we need to meet TTFT anyway, so SSD is not our uh, choice at this moment. But we'll see whether SSD can be enabled for uh, prompt cache offloading. No, because see, all these other NVIDIA and all these presentations, they're just saying, hey, GPU direct to SSD, you know, don't mm. need to, they, they don't advertise adding more memory anywhere, you know, so. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, based on the open source available, we tried uh, LA Cache and also with Dynamo as well. The offloading to SSD is not mature yet, as far as I know, maybe it can be, it is being developed in NES pretty soon, so we'll try out later then. Okay, there actually is two minutes left if someone wants a question. Mic is open. Okay, looks like we're done. Thank you very much. Thank you.